grand rising everyone um so this this uh, lecture this video this interior design um FFE specialty video is going to touch on a few subjects today i hope everybody is well if you are not following the youtube channel make sure you check out providence life design um if you are seeking services for your interior design and um, you just completed a construction project and you want to make sure that all of the finishes are beautiful feel free to reach out to me um, and that is here in Greater Accra um, as north as Kumasi and as east as Takrati okay that's where we are right now all right so I'm going to touch upon three things you can see I'm like I'm literally like in a construction site uh Mr I, I probably shouldn't say his name you know Ghana is much smaller than we think it is as big as a country as it is but these cities um yeah so this gentleman that has this renovation project going on um, we had to do a small little consulting uh, for him to realize what it is. It, it, there's a lot of corrections that need to be made. Um, and the corrections are going to be made because there is a renovation in process. So there were like completed buildings, but there's a lot of faults with those. And, and just like the receiving areas and everything of these buildings, it's just like it's not a good situation. So anyways, um, the space is supposed to be used for commercial use and there were some things that were just kind of like ignored and that tends to happen a lot here in this beautiful beautiful country of Ghana and I'm still learning a lot about the social norms of like what is correct and like what's socially acceptable and then just the stuff that people get away with <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole lot of stuff that people just get away with so I think these videos are going to be so important to anyone it is that you know that is embarking on a, uh, you know, they just acquired some land, they've already been through the lands registry, they know they want to break ground, they know when they want to break ground, they've already consulted with an architect and kind of like, you know, not pointing, pointing and building. That's never a good idea. How about we start with that? That's never a good idea, that whole pointing and building. I saw a lot of that in Guyana as well. And what it results in is houses, structures, where people are asking you a lot of questions. Like, oh, where's the bathroom? Oh, how? Where? How? You know what I mean? Like, you don't want a space where people are like completely dumbfounded as to how to move around this space, even if you're not there to guide them. That concerns me. There's a lot of that going on in Guyana, you know, where you'll see like a roof ending and you're like, well, why does the roof end here? That means that this isn't protected. It's a whole lot of that kind of stuff going on. So here, um, I think I, I, I'm not sure, you know, where the start and end happens with um, properly consulting architects but um, you know I guess people just kind of like want to make their dollar stretch right and it's not any different than in the states you know especially in Miami um, you know I did a lot of consulting for like first-time home buyers and uh, single women homeowners and that type of thing and um, my advice was you know priceless to them because they were kind of just, you know, winging it on their own, assuming that they would be able to take care of all these things that they need to take care of on their own. <laughs> you can see the whole little, <laughs> you see the dirt, big time construction, <laughs> construction situation going on here. All right, so the three things I want to talk about and, um, Namely, also what's happening here in the space that I'm at and that prompted this video is space is site planning. I don't think um, property owners put enough effort into site planning. It's like 
because we've done this right this doesn't this is not just based on like one example this has happened probably about three times in the last month where someone you know where you're on a site the property is there the property is owned and you kind of like walk the site and then you think okay this is a good little perch you know to put the house now I think that property owners don't think about like the paling, the actual foundation of the property before they do those kind of things. Sure, you want like a little outlook. You want to be able to kind of like see over a cliff if you know if you're if you're situated that way. You want to be able to see the water. You want to have a good view and everything um, when you wake up in the morning. All those things are really important. But when you're planning that, when you're planning what you want your morning um, view to look like plan the other things okay there are things such as tarp there are even um there's materials that you can get from hardware suppliers that keeps weeds down that's a good thing also that you could put down on the ground um so you can properly site plan now the site plan you need to think about where you're putting your building what are your exterior buildings going to be if they're going to be like um boys girl quarters you understand um we are Additional family members will live. Um, what is their What does their exit look like? Are, you know, where is their door facing? These are things to think about, right? Also, the, another thing that's really important, and I'm super passionate about, is where is your kitchen garden going to be, right? Is Is gardening your thing? Do you want to only see decorative plants? Do you only want to have roses? Um, do you want like a functional kitchen garden where you have tomatoes and peppers and eggplant and okra, you know, growing some greens? That's super important, especially when you're in countries where a lot of the things you want are not readily available either by like a large scale um supermarket or even the local market right you got to pay attention like what's the local cuisines things like that 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 i'm sure you're figuring it out anyways um on your own so site planning is super important think about you know what your exterior what your the other buildings are going to be like on the property how you're going to use it are you digging a borehole to get your own water supply you know are you going to use solar panels where do you want your solar panels to be situated? Are you doing a modern looking, um, you know, structure? Stack houses, as much as I love a stack house, right? Um, it seems to be like the primary new construction that's happening here in Ghana, which, you know, there's only but so many things you can complain about. <laughs> uh, I, I, Maybe I wish it was like a little bit more variety, but I'd rather that be done and be done correctly. So um, stack houses are super big in Miami, that form of construction. Um, what people need to know is that if you're doing a stack home, and that is a very boxy looking type of construction, it's where the rooms, the corridors, the usable and the outdoor spaces are kind of like situated on top of each other in a box-like formation, okay? And what I think happens is that sometimes people kind of like acquire things out of like, out of frustration, out of um, lack of market exposure, like there's not enough of what they want to see or they just don't know, right? And hence why you would hire an FFE specialist such as myself you know um, when you are doing something that is so modern you got to think about like what is the time frame when was this created you know is it an offshoot of mid-century modern if that's the case what is an ideal railing to put on the exterior of the house what's an ideal tile to use in the interior you know use grout people yeah I see very little grout in Ghana and and that concerns me because that has a lot to do with how the actual building performs but you know hey anyways <laughs> so um all right so we talked about site planning um the second thing I want to talk about is brick quality so while you're over there figuring out like okay 
I want to put this building up. I want my boys' quarters to be over here. I want my 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 water towers to be concealed in this kind of way. This is how I want it formatted. One thing that is not put enough thought into. I don't know yet who the main, you know, main manufacturer is, but I know that a lot of people tend to like make bricks for themselves for their own construction and then they just start building the the concern that I have with that is when it comes to making your own bricks whoever it is that you have making your bricks for you they may be looking at generating quantity and not so much quality and that's an issue because I have just seen way too much poorly made bricks abandoned bricks stored bricks that are breaking down on their own they have probably been sitting in that spot for about two months waiting for their owner to come and finish up the project and 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 the homeowner is thinking i.e you the property owner is thinking well once i've made my bricks and they're dried and they're cured and they're stacked up there they can be stored there that's not necessarily the case because most bags of cement is coming at like a 30 pound 30 pound bag of cement should not be making 25 bricks people okay let's let's fix that issue because something that is is constant and if you drive around greater Accra you drive around Kumasi you drive around these areas you know exactly what I'm talking about you see a wall it doesn't even look like it's that old but it's falling apart and the joints where the mason was putting together the bricks, it looks stronger than the actual bricks themselves. The bricks are disintegrating into sand. That's no good, right? So in that situation, quantity is, don't don't try to go for quantity. Don't try to do that. Um, I think something else that people don't realize, and I'm going to explore this, I'm going to delve into it deeper when I talk more about natural buildings, right? Because I'm a huge fan of natural buildings, is that, Cement is a, is a relatively uh, new product in the sense of humanity, sense of construction, sense of making structures, humans, you know, utilizing their spaces and building structures to raise their families and things like that. Concrete is brand new. Concrete is like 100 years old, maybe, maybe, you understand? So uh, sometimes, you know... It's not the best thing, guys. It's not the best thing. You know, um, there's this, uh, in, in the, how can you put it? In the world outside of the West, right? Outside of, I wouldn't even say out, out, outside of major cities. Let me say that. Because some of these natural buildings, um, building construction, um, processes are implemented in in Europe believe it or not there's this misconception in the uh the colonized in the colonized mind that um everything that is outside is better and that what we have here is not good and everything outside of here is wealthier and what we have here is poor our local is not good. And I'm going to break that myth. I'm going to break that myth, especially when it comes to household products and things like that. But I would digress, okay? But specifically talk about like building construction, you know, people have been using natural materials and sod and the earth and digging into caves and things like that and limestone and, you know, the pyramids for goodness sakes. Like these things existed long before concrete was created. And I have been in spaces where the landscape is so beautiful, rich, and lush and green. And someone will say, oh, I don't want to use red brick. That's the local stuff. They don't want to use what's local. Uh uh. But these buildings are still standing. You understand? These buildings are still standing. It's the same thing in East Africa. When you go to these places where, you know, they were running the Arab slave trade and the current one, <laughs> and the current one, you know, where, where, where you're dealing in spaces like that, no one wants to come and follow the old construction, yet those buildings are still standing. You know, um, I think I've posted videos of me walking through some of those buildings and you know the walls are literally like two feet thick a foot and a half thick you, 
you can just keep doing renovation after renovation after renovation in these buildings and they are just not going to budge, right? But then here we want to come and buy, you know, some 2,000 shilling brick. What? What are you talking about? You need to go and talk to somebody that knows how to make use of the coral that's there in the area. This isn't ent- anyway. So, site planning. Unless <laughs> I don't digress, site planning definitely is really important. The quality of your brick is important. If your bags of cement are coming at thirty pounds and you guys are making that brick on your own on your property, please do not have them. You know, let me see. If it's a 30 pound and these are fairly large bricks, then you need, you need as close as possible to two pounds of cement per brick because you want it to be strong. Even if you don't want to make all of the brick that strong, just make the the, the bottom ones. Okay. Like all your paling, all of the, 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 the brick that, you know, surrounds the building, the first three feet of that building, because that's where you're going to see the most of the water damage. There's tons of water damage on a lot of buildings here. And the water damage encourages mold. With diasporans coming here to the new world, okay, the the mold is dangerous for a lot of people that are accustomed to a Western way of life. There's a sensitivity that they come with. A lot of people have asthma, that type of thing. And mold is, is not a good, it's not a good look. It's not good eat your pineapple but it's not a good situation right so you want to make sure that you're you know you're making somewhere between 15 and 18 bricks per 30 pound bag of cement now you're probably wondering how are you going to make all of that stretch but try try your best or scale down your project (coughs) excuse me because it's better for you to make a smaller quality project than for you to make, you know, a 3,000, 4,000 square foot home. And it's just like, you know, there's a water, there's a water issue that you're not aware of. And then this building is disintegrating on you and you don't even know it. You know, a slow drip of water, it can, it could mess up a whole lot. You know, all of a sudden, instead of it, you know, you just worrying about space constraints you're now dealing with like having entire rooms in your house that you can't use properly okay the paling is very important as well that's your foundation (coughs) excuse me here in west africa africa period a lot of buildings you have to like do a major step down or step up to get onto the foundation, make sure that you're putting in steps, okay? And then also check what your step, what your step um, measurements should be per building code for your area. In a place where you're kind of like winging it and it's cowboy country, you want to use um, the ratio of 11 and 7, okay? All right. <laughs> that wasn't part of here, but yeah. So here's the last thing that I want to talk about and. I I don't even know uh, how, let me think. I mean, I'm sure people have good reasons for doing it, okay? When it comes to child safety, sure. If you're rearing small children, if it's going to be a nursery or something, and then it's a room you're going to turn into storage later, that's fine. But what I'm about to tell you is quite important, okay? Once you get past the first level of a property, And there is nothing nearby, like, there isn't, like, another roof to step on. There isn't another boys' quarter that's close by. You know, it is a freestanding building that has full-time gate service and security. There is no need for there to be bars on the window past the first floor. There really isn't. You understand. Now... If you are building some place that you think is ideally going to be used for commercial use and, you know, someone's going to open up a small little nursery or daycare or something on the second floor, okay, sure. But in, in, in the West, that's considered like a fire hazard, right? What if there's a fire that breaks out and you got to like drop these babies <laughs> 
to somebody catching them down below or to, you know, or some kind of net or something like that to rescue everyone. You're not going to be able to get out of that space at all because you have br- you have a uh, bars on the third floor that's common very 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 common here in Ghana very common here okay where you see commercial buildings you see residential buildings it is three stories high and there are bars on every build on every window of that building there's no need for that Okay, and that could potentially be a safety issue. So I say potentially because not everybody's situation is the same and that's something that everyone needs to consider. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. This is Shamrandi from Providence Life Design. Um, Feel free to reach out to me if you need um, my services. (laughs) For FFE, for specialty work, if you need... um, if you have the home already and it's already built and you've already, you know, chose what you thought is appropriate and you want the space to be dressed up with, you know, beautiful furnishings and to make your home look like a palace, call me. Okay. I'm your lady that can assist you with that. And, uh, you have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.